What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, a flu test, a test for RSV, or maybe some other virus, I hope you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Sunday edition of the Virus Update for Sunday, November 3rd, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all things COVID and all those other viruses that can make us sick. Let's face it, there's a lot of different viruses out there, and each and every one of them can make us sick in various different ways. COVID can go on to become long COVID, and let's face this as well. A lot of people are now dealing with long COVID. The summer wave of COVID did not help things whatsoever. More people now than ever before since this pandemic has started are dealing with long COVID issues such as shortness of breath, immune system deficiency, you know, people constantly getting sick again and again. I'm seeing that posted a lot. I'm seeing people saying, I'm starting to have these new heart problems, and you don't see the word COVID mentioned once. Sometimes I'll even leave a comment on social media saying, did you have COVID? And they'll say, oh yeah, but what's that got to do with it? Surprise, COVID can lead to heart problems. COVID can lead to memory issues. COVID can lead to strokes. COVID can lead to shortness of breath. COVID can lead to asthma, diabetes, a whole bunch of different things. You need to be informed and made aware of what COVID can do and what the levels are of all these different viruses. That's where I come into play here pretty much each and every day. We rarely miss a day, and if we do, I try hard not to. All right, so subscribe down below if you're new. Hit that thumbs up button. Let's go big today. Let's try for 150, over 150 like button hits. Hit that notification bell to be notified of my latest videos. Share this with anyone you know. And leave your comments down below. All right. We just have a few news stories today. And then really what we're going to look at today is viruses in wastewater. Starting off with this though. And this is a virus that we don't usually see in wastewater. I don't know. Do they track pneumonia in wastewater? Can that be done? I don't think it can be. But anywho, children's doctors reporting unusual increase in walking pneumonia cases in Canada. Yes, we've been hearing a lot about pneumonia lately. I've been hearing stories of people with pneumonia. I just found out a neighbor like half a block away had pneumonia back in September and she is just now getting over from it. Yes, all of October she was sick. Matter of fact, all of September, because it was early September, pneumonia can be really, really serious. Just because you saw on TV that a football player, uh, Debo Samuels, had pneumonia and a week later uh, was out of the hospital and recovered, doesn't mean it's going to be that way for everyone. It can really hit people hard, and up in Canada, they are starting to see increasing numbers of it in children, and it's also starting to be reported in the United States as well. All right, moving on to this. In Italy, we do get an Italy update from Dennis the COVID guy. Italy reports 5,799 new infections and 108 deaths were reported in the last week. 24, this is from October 24th through October 30th, reported cases, once again, 5,799. That is down by 33%. Deaths, 108. That's down by 7%. And the positivity rate was 7.3%. That was down by 2 0.3%. XEC now at 25% of sequenced cases. Already, the weekly update from wastewater scan is as follows. COVID-19 nationwide SARS-CoV-2 is in the high category with medium concentrations and an upward trend now over the last three weeks. So it is starting to trend up. That is new. And COVID-19 variants in sequencing data from a subset of wastewater scan sites. We see that the KP family makes up 61% of variants. KP.1 in lime green is at 3.9%. KP.2 in slate blue is at 14%. KP.3 in light blue is at 43.4%. Note, sequencing data has a lag of one to two weeks after collection. And I should add this. I saw something posted yesterday that over in the UK, in Europe, KP 3.1.1 is still the dominating variant there from what I saw. So that's rather interesting. 
RSV nationally, this is in the United States now, RSV nationally, and in all regions, RSV is in the low category and not in seasonal onset. However, the rate of detection has increased modestly in the last couple of weeks, especially in the South. Influenza flu A and B are in low category nationally and in all regions. Flu A and B are not in the seasonal onset just yet. That's good news to report. H5 influenza marker H5 has been detected in nine states since the start of monitoring. Wastewater for um, EV-D68 continues to be in the high category nationally as it is in onset at a high concentration with a downward trend. Most regions are in the high category except the Midwest in the last 10 days. EV-D68 was detected in approximately 66% of samples tested. Norovirus. This has been a real problem that I've been talking about several times in recent videos. Norovirus is in the high category nationally with medium concentrations and an upward trend over the last three weeks. So that's the weekly wastewater scan and we'll take a look at individual sites from them in just a few moments. Alrighty, let's take a look at air qualities across the United States. I do need to refresh this. We'll see if it loads. If it doesn't, that's fine too, but there are several areas that have been dealing with some air quality issues. You can see some minor issues over the Great Lakes, some minor issues over Georgia, Tennessee, Western North Carolina, Western South Carolina, and of course this does continue on the West Coast, and I should add, you may or may not see it here, because things may have improved, but in portions of the Lehigh Valley, just north of the Allentown, Bethlehem area, there was a wildfire overnight last night, and that did provide some pretty bad air qualities. Moving on now to this, you want to follow me on my weather account, you can do that at Climate Data Reports over on X or on Blue Sky. And of course, I do have my other YouTube channel where I did just post today's video with the latest weather update for Election Day this week, uh, severe storms over the next couple of days, and I talk about the latest on the tropical threat. That is on Climate Data Report over on YouTube. Philadelphia yesterday had 791 EMS incidents reported, and a live look in, if things still remained the way they were just a few minutes ago, you're going to see some not-so-good calls. In Montgomery County, we do see stroke listed once, we do see cardiac emergency, sickable episode, respiratory emergency, and cardiac arrest. Not a lot of calls, sometimes it's just the type of call. And over in Chester County, yep, it's still there. Heart problems, sick person. Heart problems, cardiac arrest in Honeybrook, cardiac arrest in West Goshen Township, respiratory emergency, and another heart problems call. A lot of cardiac arrest uh, calls today. Yeah, don't like seeing cardiac arrest. It's not a good thing. It's the cream of the crop when it comes to bad calls for EMS. All right, taking a look now at wastewater, and we will actually, let's see here, I actually need to refresh this so it comes up. We'll take a look at Pennsylvania first, and you can see in Pennsylvania, there is a increase in wastewater for COVID being detected in Montgomery County and also up in the Lehigh Valley in Lehigh County. The rest of the state, for the most part, is no change. There is one wastewater site in Monco Monroe County at this time that is reporting a decrease in COVID in wastewater. That is some good news. We'll keep an eye on this. We'll get another update on this either Tuesday or Wednesday. It's supposed to be Tuesday and Thursdays, but Last week, it did come in on Wednesday. The national viral activity level for COVID in the United States at this time is listed as low, and you can see it's been continuing to drop, but starting to slow off some. Alrighty, we take a look at this map each and every week, but some people may be new to my channel and don't know what the colors mean. The dark blue colors represent low levels of COVID, and you can see we're now up to 460 sites at that color. And then you get to a slightly lighter shade of blue, which is still relatively low levels of COVID, 519 sites. This is a huge improvement from the summer months. Then the lightest shade of blue, which is moderate COVID levels, 238. And then moderate to high, which is orange, that's 40 sites. And we're down to just five red sites. That is a really huge improvement 
from where we were in the summer months. Let's start on the west and make our way to the east. We can see Washington, Oregon. You're doing really well at this time. Let's click on some of these uh, sites. We can see Pierce and King Counties continue to drop in Washington State. Pierce at this other wastewater site continues to drop at this time. And we can see when we take a look at Oregon. Oregon is also continuing to drop at this time, which is some really good news. Then when we come down to California, we can see low levels continue there as well. Low levels continue, maybe a few near moderate sites in Utah. And then a couple orange sites are showing up in Montana, Park, Montana. You're actually starting to rise a little bit at this time. We can see as we come over to the Four Corners region, doing pretty well there. Let's click on this orange site in New Mexico. We can see that is even dropping at this time. Then we'll come over here to Arizona, Maricopa County. You are still dropping at this time as well. Texas levels are still low at this time. Just a couple moderate sites in the Great Lakes. And there is one red site in Wisconsin. Vernon? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Vernon? Wow, what's going on with you? It's a very small wastewater site, but you are continuing to rise at this time. So that's not good. And Chicago area. Very low levels being reported at this time. The southeast is still mostly low. There are a few red sites. Uh, Buford, South Carolina is coming up in the red. And we can see Russell, Virginia is coming up in the red. And Henderson, North Carolina is red and already starting to rise once again. That's not good. In the northeast at this time, we do see here that New York State, for the most part, is doing well. Western New York, a few orange sites. And a couple orange and light blue sites showing up in Maine. Now let's take a look at wastewater scan. And we will take a look at the national levels for COVID. And we'll go region by region and then just do a couple wastewater sites before we end this video for today. Yeah, not that much to talk about today, but I do want to show some wastewater sites here. You can see nationwide, the COVID levels, for the most part, are still, it's medium. It's not really rising that much yet. It's about to start rising soon. RSV is low. Influenza A is still low. Influenza B is still low. HMBV is still low. Norovirus, I'm really concerned about this. It continues to rise. I've been seeing illness reports when I do my Google searches talking about norovirus. Yeah, norovirus is high and continuing to rise at this time nationally and for most of the regions in the United States. For the Midwest, COVID levels are medium. Not really rising that much yet. RSV is low, influenza A is low, influenza B is low, HMPV is low, and norovirus is high at this time. Take a look at this. Yes, it's been rising. Then you do see a wonky movement down. That will get corrected. Taking a look at the northeast, we can see here, COVID may be starting to rise pretty soon. RSV is still low, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV is still low, and norovirus here is high as well maybe trying to level off, which would be some good news. In the south at this time, we do note COVID levels are still low. But take a look at this. Yes, it's starting to rise ever so slightly. RSV is low, but starting to rise. Influenza A is low, influenza B is low, HMPV is low, and yet again, norovirus, high levels and continuing to rise at this time. In the west coast region of the United States, we can see medium for COVID, RSV is low at this time, and we can see here also that influenza A is low, influenza B is low. Uh, real quickly, going back to COVID, it does look like maybe you might be starting to rise for COVID, and look at this. Now, I don't understand this. Norovirus is listed at medium, similar levels to what we saw down in the south, but for whatever reason, they're saying it's medium. And take a look at this. Yeah, it's continuing to rise. That concerning rise in many states across the United States. All right, let's take a look at some uh, individual wastewater sites. Bloomington, Indiana, low for COVID at this time. RSV is low, influenza A is low. We can also see here influenza B is low, HMPV is low, and norovirus is at this time, this is one of the lower sites for that, and we do see that there are no detections of MPOX at this time. Let's do a few more wastewater sites. Let's go somewhere down closer to the south, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And we do see here COVID levels are medium and starting to rise slightly. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A is low, influenza B is low, HMPV is low, norovirus is low at this time. 
and no mpox being detected in this area. Now let's go out to the west coast. Let's take a look at what's going on near Salt Lake City and we'll see what the virus levels are there. We can see low for COVID, low for RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV low, but yet again, there it is, another wastewater site with high norovirus levels. All right, moving on now, let's stay out west. Let's take a look at what's going on in, how about we go up near, let's see here, yes, let's click on Sacramento. That's what I was thinking of. We haven't checked Sacramento in quite some time. And Sacramento is low for COVID. RSV, still low at this time. Influenza A is low, but take a look at this. It does look like it's rising to me. Influenza B is low, HMPV is low, and wow, yet again, norovirus is rising in that region. So not good to see norovirus so high in so many areas. Now let's go up into the northeast, and how about we click on Montpelier, Vermont, and see what's going on there. We can see COVID levels listed as high and now starting to rise. I mean, you had a busy season in Vermont. Leaf peeping is a big deal. That's why your COVID levels likely stayed at high levels. RSV is low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. Norovirus is medium. Mpox is low at this time with no detections. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Sunday edition of the virus update. We'll have another virus update again tomorrow. I'm sure we'll have quite a few things to talk about. If you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and leave all your comments down below. I promise we will get to some more wastewater sites tomorrow, maybe Michigan, maybe some places we did not get to today. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe everyone, and have a fantastic Sunday afternoon. Thanks for watching.